In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a photo frame and change the photo by using green card. So let's get into it. So as you can see, if we play our footage, we have a handheld video clip of a photo frame. And inside the photo frame, you'll notice I've put a piece of green card with some tracking markers. You can see there's these black crosses. So in order to do this effect, you first want to make sure that you get some green card and then you want to put these tracking markers on and then you just want to make sure that this is angled away from any reflections. So you want to make sure that you're not seeing any windows or anything reflected in the photo frame. You want to make sure it is completely green at all times. Then once you've got that footage, we can just go ahead, get this into After Effects, and we can begin by just tracking the footage. Now there's many different ways that we can track this footage, but I'm just going to use the basic tracker inside of Adobe After Effects. We do have Boris FX Mocha, and this is a really advanced motion tracking plugin that comes with After Effects, but we won't do that for now. We'll just keep it to the normal tracker. So in order to get to that, we'll just go to the tracker window. And as you can see, it says motion source none. So we'll just select this frame. We'll pull back to the very beginning and we go into track motion. And as you can see, that's loaded up a separate window. You can see this is our tracking point. So I'm just going to zoom in and as you can see, I can move this tracking point and I'm just going to track that into the middle of one of those crosses. And of course, we also want to select rotation because I was handheld. There'll be a slight chance that I rotate the camera a little bit. So if we select rotation, that can add a new tracking point and we'll just place this one into one of these other tracking points. So you could go for the bottom left, you could go for the bottom right, top right, it's completely up to you, but I'm going to go for the bottom right in this example. And then from there, if you've moved in or out and the scale has changed, you want to select scale. But in my example, I stayed locked and just moved the camera a little bit so I can ignore that for now. And then we can just press the play button to analyze forward. And as you can see, those tracking points should stick to the cross. If they drift, you just want to go back to the point where they started drifting and move them back in place and then press play again. As you can see though, in this example, because there's a nice level of contrast there, because it's green on a black cross, that is staying put and it's doing a great job of keeping it there. So as you can see in my example, we started at around the eight second mark and we're currently at the 12 second mark. So I'm just gonna press the space bar to pause that for now, because I think that's all I need to show you at this point. So now we just want to go ahead and edit target. So you see, we're going to press edit target. And unfortunately, we can't add it to anything. We need to add it to a null object. So I'm just going to go ahead and select layer new null object. And now we can edit the target to that newly created null one. So we'll press OK. We will go into options and make sure all of this is doing exactly what it needs to do, which in this example is completely fine. Motion source is the footage. Current track is tracker one. Track type is transform. Then we can just press apply and you want to apply it to the X and Y dimensions. Press OK. And now if I close this window down, you'll notice we've got motion tracked footage. So this means if we go ahead and add a solid in, we'll press OK to this. We'll just pull the scale down. Now, if we parent this, so we use the parent and link tool and drag that to the null, it means it's going to perfectly track with our footage. And that's exactly what we need it to do. So now we need to go ahead and get rid of the green so that we can add a photo behind this. So in order to get rid of the green, we are just going to go into effects and presets and we will search for key light. So key light 1.2 loads up there. We're just going to drop that onto the footage. We'll use this here. So we'll use the pick whip tool on screen color to select the green. And then we just want to go into view, select status. And the point here is to try and get white and black. We don't want any gray because gray is an in-between. So we can do that by adjusting the screen gain. So there you go. Black is removing it. White is the solid that we want to keep and the gray is a fuzzy in-between. So we want this green screen to turn black and then we want the background to go white. So we'll adjust the screen gain and screen balance to get to that point. But unfortunately, you can see it's not quite doing what I need it to do. So we'll go into screen matte and we'll adjust the clip black and we'll also adjust the clip white to get to the point that we're looking for. But you can see it's not doing the best job in this example. So we'll just go back to final results and see how that looks. As you can see, 
very ugly at this moment in time. So I'm just going to go back into the settings here. You can see the screen balance was pulling out a lot. If you wanted to as well, by the way, you can turn on the transparency grid. So turn on that transparency grid and that should appear behind the footage. So because we can see the transparency grid coming through the photo frame, that is not what we want. Now, unfortunately, if I pull the screen balance all the way down to zero, the photo frame is perfect, but the rest of the frame has started to be eaten into by the key light plugin. But as long as the photo frame is fine, that is completely fine because we can mask this layer. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're just going to go up to the pen tool and I'm just going to draw a mask around this photo frame. So just like this. And then from there, we'll just go into there. We'll go into the mask, go into mask one and we'll just change add to none for now. Then you just want to create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. We'll move back a second and then you just want to move the position of this mask up so that it is now back over the photo frame. And we'll just keep doing that same process every second. We'll just nudge that mask back over so that it is roughly following where the photo frame is going. Of course, if you wanted to go frame by frame or even every half second or so, that is completely up to you. But I find as long as that is roughly staying on top of the photo frame, that should do what it needs to do. So now we can go back into the mask and change this to add. And then we can just copy this layer. So we'll go command C, command V. And on the bottom layer, we're going to change this to inverted. And then we would delete key light from this bottom layer. And now you can see we've got a really clean key. And that is because only this part of the frame inside the mask is now being affected. So this is where we can now go ahead and import our photo that we want to add in. So I'm just going to drag this random image of the Blackpool Tower in. You just want to scale that down a little bit so that it is closer to the size of the photo frame. So go into transform and scale down. So we'll pull that down to a smaller number. And then we can parent and link this to our null. And then we'll place that in between those two footage layers like this. And then we'll just drag that to the very bottom underneath everything. And you can see that is now underneath and inside our photo frame. The only problem is though that doesn't look great at the moment. So we're going to go into effects and presets and we're going to search for corner pin. So we'll drop the corner pin onto that image layer. And now you just want to go and change all of the corners to the top corner of the photo frame. So if we just zoom in to see what we're doing, we'll move upper left, we'll press this button and I'm just going to move it roughly in between here. Then we'll go to upper right and we'll move up here. Lower left will be down here and then lower right will be down in the lower right corner. And now when we play this back, you'll notice that is perfectly tracked into the photo frame and that looks pretty good. The issue that I'm seeing though is the key is very messy. So we're seeing this fuzziness happening around the frame. So in order to fix that, I'm just going to go back into that key light plugin and I'm just going to make some adjustments. Now, as you can see, that hasn't done a great deal. So we'll go back into the clip black and the clip white and clipping the black seems to be doing a good job so far. And then we can also just clip the white as well. And that's doing a pretty good job. So now all you need to do is just color match this photo. So you can see it's quite a desaturated image and in here that is quite a saturated image. So I'm just going to go in to Lemetri. So that's in the effects and presets tab, search for Lemetri color. We'll drop this onto the photo frame. Then we'll go into creative and I'm just going to turn the vibrance down a touch. I'll also pull the saturation down a touch. Also, you're probably noticing that the corner of the image is disappearing. So just drag Lemetri to the top and that should fix that issue. There we go, problem solved. So I've pulled the saturation down a little bit. The contrast level is probably still a bit too much there. So I'm just gonna go into basic correction and I'm just going to pull the contrast down or over to the left a little bit just to bring back some of that detail there. And that to me looks like it belongs in the scene. 
Of course, as well, if you wanted to, you could add a white layer on top of this. So you could add a white solid, mask it and add some reflection. So if you go layer, new solid, change the color to white, press OK, press OK, parent and link that to null one. Drop this underneath the video layers, but on top of the photo. Then we'll go to the pen tool and just draw a mask across the center of the screen. We can then go into masks. We can go into mask one, pull the feather up a little bit. And then we can just pull the opacity all the way down to a very small number. So somewhere around 23, 24. And you can see you've got a very subtle reflection now on that photo frame. If you wanted to as well, if you had a picture of the room that this was filmed in, you could add this on top, track this in, and then you could change the blending mode on top of that to make it look like you're getting the reflections from the room in the photo. But there you go. That is how you take handheld footage of a photo frame and track in a photo into that photo frame. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.